Hi everyone, how are you all? Um, I just thought I would do a Q&A session this afternoon. Um, I know it's after four. Um, but every time I decide to do a live Facebook, everyone starts to call me. So, um, so Wednesday is the day I start to get busy with all my cakes and I thought I'd show you a few little techniques on how I ganache cakes. And if you want to, we can do um, some Q and A questions. Um, so, first up, I, we've got a couple of people watching, but I'm not going to wait for everyone to watch because you'll all probably come in and you can record it. It'll be recorded as well. So, I've got a couple of cakes that are going out early this week, so I'm kind of a day behind. I'm not a day behind, but... What I'm doing at the minute, I'm just warming up some delicious uh, chocolate ganache. And I'm just warming up in my microwave. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera down so you're going to get to see what I'm going to be doing. So we've just had a bit of a storm that came through and quite a huge amount of rain, which is great. And what I'm doing is I'm warming up my chocolate ganache now. It has to be, I always make the joke, it has to be like George Clooney, it mustn't resist me. So when I put my knife in, I want it to be really lovely and spreadable. And one of my tips that I'm gonna to share to, with you on Wednesday, four o'clock tip sharing, we could call it that, I put everything on these trays, so everything just gets dumped on my trays. No messiness, it all goes on the tray. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to prepare a cake and cover it in chocolate ganache and then that's going to prepare me for when I put my beautiful fondant on. I will put my lovely glasses on and you can say hello, you can give me a thumbs up. Can you all hear me? Can I have some smiles or gestures just so that I know people are watching? Anyone watching? We got 10 viewers which is wonderful. Can I have a uh, thumbs up? Yay! Yay! Hi Lingin. Hi Nick. Hello. So you can all hear me? Wonderful. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I prepare a cake and if you'd like you can have questions, okay? Um, so the first thing I do, and it's probably a little bit unique to maybe other cake makers, is when I bake my beautiful cakes I leave them in their beautiful tins and I leave them on the cooling rack overnight to cool down. I don't try and quickly take them out the tins and let them cool down that way. And then once they're cool, I then glad wrap them. And then what I do is I give my papers a bit of a wiggle. Okay. And then when I cut my papers, I also cut them on an angle so they fit the tins beautifully. And then what I'm going to do with this beautiful cake, I'm going to get my long, large serrated knife. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this on a piece of gripper mat. Now you can ask questions, but more than likely I will not be answering them until I go back through and read them all. So um, when I do the Q&A, which will probably be in that another 10 minutes, depending on how quick I do this, I will, ask, I will answer questions as you type them. But if you do type some questions in now, do come back in an hour or so's time or tomorrow and I will answer them, okay? So next I've got a lovely beautiful bit of gripper mat so my cake is not going to be moving anywhere. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my, my beautiful 14 inch serrated knife and I'm going to pop it on top of this cake tin. Okay? And I'm going to use the knife and I'm just going to glide halfway in and then reverse my knife back out. And then I'm going to reverse it back in, keeping it really, really nice and flat. Now. With all your offcuts, and I've got a huge pile happening here, so the family is going to be happy. But with all your offcuts of your cake, you can use them. And you can use them for cake pops. I wait until I've got quite a few, and I put them in the freezer. And then when I've got quite a few, so this, this is a stock pile from some of this morning's cake. So these are white marbles. But what I do is I put them all in a big bag, pop them in the freezer. And then once I feel the urge, which is quite often, I will put them in a food processor, grind them down, put some chocolate ganache, and then roll them out into beautiful chocolate uh, cake pops. Now, we've got Christmas coming up, and when I used to be a pastry chef, 
I've got to sit down. I've had a, I've had a, I've had a crazy week. Last weekend was probably the worst weekend of my life, but hey, life goes on. Um, Christmas time, all our beautiful off, -cut, off cuts, we can make into beautiful flavored, um, like rumbles. We can basically process all the cake crumbs in a food processor or in a bag and get your aggression out and whack them, but make them all like very fine breadcrumbs and then you can fold in delicious chocolate ganache. And then what you can do is you can either measure each ball if you wanna be really accurate but I just dust my hands in a tiny little bit of cocoa powder and I roll out the balls and I lay them on the tray and then I pop them in the fridge. And then once they're chilled, you can either dust them in beautiful cocoa powder and then just put them in lovely little papers and then put them in a box and they're an awesome gift to give at Christmas. And what you can do, I've got some beautiful chocolate ganache, but if I wanted to, I could have put a liqueur in here. So I could put Bailey's, Cointreau, Kahula, Tia Maria, the, the list is endless as to what you can put in here. And you can put it in with the cream, two tablespoons to roughly a recipe, and then you can flavor it. So you can have Bailey's, Cointreau, Tia Marie, Kahula, flavored um, cake pops, you know, or as I call them, chocolate truffles, you know. Um, if you want to turn them into cake pops, you can let them chill, and then you can dip, melt some chocolate, and basically what I normally do is I melt about 100 grams of chocolate and I put it on a medium um, temperature in a microwave bowl in the microwave and I zap it for about a minute. I want it half liquid, half solid, and then I just stir it and then that's tempering. Okay, so half and half. Once it's half melted, stir it and it should melt. And then what I do is if it's white chocolate, I color it with um, uh, chocolate liquid colors not liquid colours, but they have to be the liquid uh, colours. The Merry Colour do the candy melts range, the candy range. And you can use the, the powders, but you can colour all your beautiful white chocolate colour. And then you can dip them into sticks and then you can um, dip your sticks, your cake pops into the colours. And you can make coloured, you know, you could do Christmassy ones and do them like a little Christmas pudding. You could dip them in white and then once they're set, you can then dip half them at the bottom so it looks like the, 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 the brandy, the fruit cake pudding and then the white icing on top. You can do all sorts. So with your off cuts and your cakes, don't waste them. The other thing that I do, um, for those that know me and uh, I love chocolate trifle. So chocolate trifle is probably my go-to dessert plus plum tart to tan, which I adore. For all my beautiful chocolate off cuts, I break into a, a nice glass bowl. I make some jelly up. I'm still freaked out by Australian jelly because it's crystals. In, in the UK, we have like rubber gelatin and uh, as kids, we used to eat it all the time. Don't tell, don't tell, don't tell the family. Um, but with the jelly, you can make a nice black currant strawberry jelly and I put it on top of the uh, chocolate cake and then I put mandarin oranges and then some fresh bananas and I pour the jelly on top and I let it all set. And then I make a lovely custard and then whipped cream and then grated chocolate. It's hard living in my household, but we're no quitters. So chocolate offcuts are amazing to use in your trifles, in your cake pops, your truffles, and you can simply scoff them. You know, I warm them up with a bit of ganache and ice cream and it's delicious. So don't waste your offcuts and like, like if you only have a few, wait until you, you know, put them in the freezer and wait till you've got quite a few and then use them, okay? So, it's the best bit of the cake. Now, my cake now is all leveled. I don't use any of these fancy levelers. I better not mention the names because I'll get into trouble, but I don't use any fancy levelers. I don't feel the need to. Um, I've always, always used the top of my tin to cut, something I learned at college. And then when we used to bake the really thin rings, we used to run our knives on top. So I don't see the purpose. I, I Trust me, I love other te uh, technical tools to use, but I don't, I don't need a, uh, a big slicer, okay? So um, I will be answering people's questions, but A, I haven't got my lovely glasses on, so I can't read what you're writing. There's loads of comments coming up. Um, but I will do a and a at the end, and then if you type the question, I will answer it to my best of my ability. So let me explain a few things uh, for those that may be just joining. Everyone tells me that they get very, very messy when they start ganashing, okay? Now for me, I love it because I just dumped everything onto a tray, okay? 
So at college we used to use just a baking tray. So that any, you know, like a baking tray that we'd have, we would just simply put all our tools and bits and bobs and tidy up that way, okay? So in, in ordinary life, I still, when I'm working in my own kitchen or up in my studio, I get these trays. Now these trays in Australia are from good old office works, about $6 each. If you go into Kmart, they're $2 a pop and they're lovely. They're also nice bright colors. But notice I put everything back on this tray, scrapers, crank pallet knives, everything's back on the tray, not on my workbench. So everything is really, really clean. I used to work with an amazing chef called Ted and we called him Ted the Bread. And he used to say, Jackie, clean as you go. And I go, yes, Ted. And he used to say, clean as you go. You say it about five times. And then he goes, if you don't clean, there ain't no go. So I started cleaning as I go. And I think it's really important because otherwise we start to be disappointed in what we do. We're like, oh, I hate that because it's so messy. Now the cake that I've baked, I've got a seven inch round cake. And what I've done is I've glued another seven inch cake board to my presentation board. And I've got an extra board glued underneath. Now, I am about to put my book as an e-book, um, an e-book e on my website. If you look at my website in a minute, the whole site has crashed, so that's not, that's not going too well. But the, um, the hoster, they've just swapped over and the, everyone's sites are crashing. And I was call at 84 this morning, so I gave up. So um, my ebook is going to be on my website soon, um, but all these instructions are in my book and also in my video tutorials. So what I've done is I've glued a seven inch cake board onto my display board. And you might go, well, why, why, why you done that? You'll see in a minute, because I'm going to use this to, to ganache. Now the other thing is, I just want to show you something. Some of the cake balls we've been getting lately are really rough around the edges and they're all warped, bumpy, bumpy, bumpy. We need to literally roll them on our workbench and get rid of all those bumpy bumps. Otherwise, when I can ash and run my scrape around the side, I'm gonna get a bumpy, bumpy, bumpy effect, okay? So make sure when you buy your cake boards and we're using boards, not gatto cards, which are too flimsy, we make sure that all that edging is knocked down and pushed down and everything is nice and neat. We've got a bit of a storm coming, so I will talk loud. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to use is a low turntable, and that's a great tool to have. And then I'm going to get a bit cranky. Well, hopefully I'm not, but my crank palette knives will. So I've got a big, big boy crank palette knife and a smaller one. Okay, and they're angled. We call them cranked or angled. They're basically, they're just not a flat blade. Okay. And then I've got my good old side scraper. Now there's lots and lots of side scrapers out. There's tons that are coming through the doors. Great designs, but you know what? I love my old faithful Royal Icing Scraper. Now it's a flat edge on there, and it's beautiful and curvy there. And when we hold it, we want to hold it like a handshake. We may not handshake many people in our lives nowadays, but we put one thumb that side, and we balance those four beautiful fingers that side. We don't hold it like this, we hold it really nice and thin. Hey, there's a big storm coming, but we'll carry on. Okay, I hopefully you can all hear me. I will, I will speak loud. So, what I'm doing next is I'm going to get my ganache, and when with my ganache, you'll be noticed I make it in small containers. I make a big batch, but I put it in small containers. The reason why I do that is because I only have to then warm up a small amount at a time and I'm not having to heat up a massive container, okay? And I can also store this quite happily in my freezer without it taking up too much space because it's a big massive container and it's bulky, okay? Now these are from my favourite shop Ikea um, because I am really, really close to Ikea. It's one of the reasons why we, we, we ended up in Daisy Hill. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the underside part of the knife and I'm going to call, I'm going to call it a technical dollop. And I'm going to put one dollop there, one dollop there. And basically I'm going to do five dollops on the top of my tin. Okay. Now make sure those dollops aren't huge. Otherwise when I flip my cake over, that cake is going to move over. Okay. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my board over and I glued this this morning so it's nice and set. You'll notice I've set it offset so I can basically put a nice inscription on the board. And I'm going to turn it over, hold it like so, and then flip it over. But because it's on a bit of an awkward angle, I'm going to put one hand there and one hand there and turn it over. And then once I do that, I'm going to move it over. If you find that when you turn it over, you've got a big gap there, move the cake tin back over, okay? And then I'm going to take the top off, take the paper off, unless you want to give your family fibre. Bad joke's coming up. And then what I do is I just wiggle my beautiful cake in position. And what I want to do is I want to make sure my cake is within the seven inch cakes board. So I've got a seven inch cake and I've got a lovely seven inch cake board. But what I want to do is just not make sure that my cake is right over that side and then there's a big gap. I want to smack bang in the middle. Now many of you may be watching this and go, why on earth is Jackie putting an extra board on this cake board? Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that board as a size guide to then ganache my cake to it. And you might go, what does she mean by this? But you'll see as I go. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up my, my scraper and I'm gonna place it like a door. I'm gonna use the flat edge up against the bottom of the board. And what I wanna do, I wanna go all the way around. And if I do that, you can see that that is almost touching. It's touching there. So I wanna move it over, okay? And I wanna make sure that my cake is sitting as centered as possible in this area. So whoever gets to scoff this cake doesn't have a huge amount of ganache that side and there's hardly any on the other side, okay? Now, here you can see I've got a whopping great big gap there. Can you see that? And here, it's really quite close. So again, I'm gonna push the cake from the bottom, not from the top because I've got more strength in pushing it from the bottom, okay? And go all the way round, all the way round, all the way round. And if you wanted to, you could also use set squares and pop them against the side of the cake. You could also use, if you had two scrapers, one either side, and then you can also use a ruler, okay? But pretty much what I want to do is I want to steal this beautiful cake because this beautiful ganache is going to do three wonderful things for this lovely cake. It's going to seal it, so it's going to keep it lovely and fresh. It's also going to taste beautiful, so when they scoff the cake, they're going to have a beautiful, nice cake, and then they're going to have a delicious ganache coating. But the third thing is I'm going to be able to create a beautiful, sharp, smooth, covered cake. Because unfortunately, buttercream, and as delicious as it is, is too soft and movable in our hot climate, especially here in Queensland. And the further we go up, the more humid it is. So realistically, I love buttercream. Um, let me just have a quick, let me just have a quick chat to you about buttercream. I am a buttercream lover, okay? Let me straighten you out. Hello from Cape Town, South Africa. Hello. So, um, I, I absolutely love buttercream. I grew up with buttercream and buttercream was the main thing that I ever used as a kid on cupcakes and all sorts. But the problem with beautiful buttercream is if you have a really warm day, and here in Australia, it is really warm. Um, and basically buttercream will just soften so much quicker than ganache. So realistically, I always say to my students, it's like walking on a pathway when you've laid your concrete and the concrete has not quite set. And that is what buttercream is. If there's any pressure or movement, you'll find that the buttercream, when you put it on, when you roll it and put your fondant on top, it can become all squidgy. Now, the only way around that is if you put your cake in the fridge. But pretty much because of the humidity, if we then take the cake out and it's got buttercream on and it's come out the fridge, as soon as we cover it with fondant, it goes all sticky and gooey and it's a nightmare. So buttercream is beautiful, don't get me wrong, it's a lovely product, but I never use buttercream underneath my cakes that have fondant, okay? 
Now, I'm just about to put book two together, and book two has a whole section on Italian meringue buttercream, it has a whole section on white chocolate ganache. And what many of you may not know, you can actually make a batch of beautiful chocolate buttercream, and you can mix it with your ganache. Now, when my son was little, when he would want um, cupcakes for school fundraising, it would cost me an arm and leg to make ganache. And realistically, it's kind of rich and I didn't have the budget to, to put all ganache on top of the cupcakes. So what I would do is I'll make a batch of chocolate buttercream. So in, in just normal vanilla, ice and sugar, butter, whip it up. And then I'd take a couple of tablespoons of ice and sugar out before when it was weighed. And then I'd have two tablespoons of good quality cocoa powder. But what I used to do is make a batch of ganache and whip it up and mix it together. And what was great on a summer's day, and in England it's not that hot, but on a summer's day, those beautiful cupcakes would not be a pool and melt, okay? And they used to be sold out straight away before they even got on the table by the teachers. So my point is, when you use buttercream, and trust me, it's not a bad thing to use, but if you've got a hot climate, it's no good for covering our cakes. It's certainly no good here in Queensland. And that's why chocolate ganache is the way to go. The other thing is with my chocolate ganache, I do not use complete dark chocolate. I find it too strong. I do two parts milk and one part dark. And the dark chocolate I use is only 55%. It's not 80, 75, it's only 55 and it's Calibo. And it's gorgeous, it's delicious, okay? But to help your cake decorating journey, and that's kind of what I wanna do, I wanna just do a feed maybe on a Wednesday. Maybe it might be a little bit later. I kind of think four o'clock, some of you mums might be home. Some of you might be wagging from work. I'm wagging from work, don't tell my boss. But basically, chocolate ganache is just delicious and that's what we want to go. So, let me continue my cake. If you have any questions, ask away. Do not be shy. Now, there's many, many ways of covering your cake with chocolate ganache. So the first thing that we have to do, we have to check that the cake is positioned evenly. I don't level the top of my cake because I've used a top. My bottom has become my top, okay? Now, the next thing I need to do is warm up my ganache. And in my classes, I joke that if it's resisting you and you can't get your knife in, and this is like my George Clooney who resists me, what we need to do is pop it into the microwave on defrost for about five seconds, okay? So just five seconds, not much longer than that. And then all of a sudden, you can see it's a lot more spreadable. So this consistency should be that you could spread a beautiful poison or a fresh bit of bread and it doesn't tear up, okay? Now, all my ganache on my tray is the same batch, okay? And what I did earlier, I actually warmed up some ganache and I left it on too long because my phone went and I started chatting and instead of 20 second zaps, I left it for nearly a minute. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pour my runnier ganache in with my harder ganache, okay? And I'm going to bring them together. So I've got a nice runny consistency, can you see? Okay, so again, all my tools go back on that tray. And then the other thing I've got now is I've got a low turntable and a piece of gripper mat, okay? And that's going to stop my cake from catapulting anywhere. Okay, and then I'm just going to move around. And there's different methods of ganaching cakes. For me, I actually like to ganache the top method and then do the sides. So when we use the knife, it's an unusual knife because many of us have never ever used a crank palette knife. And what we need to do is to use the underside part. And the reason why we do the underside part is because when we change the angle, our arm has to then come in and it's too close to our body. Whereas when it's like that, you've got more of a sort of a 45 degrees, if that makes sense. So what I want to do first of all, I want to smooth the chocolate ganache on top of the cake. Now before you get excited and you want me to put the whole lot on top, we don't want to go too crazy. We only want to put about three to four meals on top as the sides, okay? Now the other thing that many people do wrong is they hold their knives and they do it like that as if they want to spread butter on their bread. And we don't want to lift up the tip. We want to keep that angle really, really flat. Can I have some 
likes or little stars to say A, you can hear me and B, you can see what I'm doing. You've all gone to sleep now. How many are watching? Well, we've got 10 watchers. Can you all hear me? Yep, yeah, we've got some thumbs up. That's probably my husband at work. <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna do now with my knife, I'm gonna clean up my knife and I'm just gonna hold my, my knife really nice and flat and I'm just gonna turn my turntable around, okay? So can you see the top of my cake is getting really nice and flat? So what we want to do now, I'm just going to hold it even more flatter and I'm just going to turn it round until it looks quite level, okay? So I'm just going to turn it round. So I need a little bit more on here. Now when I teach a classes, I always make a joke to the students that so I'm going to hollow it out and see if there's an echo, but I don't want a ton of ganache on top, just enough to seal it, just enough so that I can't see the top of the cake. Smells delicious, by the way, which isn't helping you. The other thing is, when I hold the knife, can you see I automatically put my finger down? And that keeps it really nice and firm, okay? It stops it sort of springing back, okay? Now, once I've done that, I'm just going to come out to the edge a little bit. And then I'm going to physically just duck down, just to look at the level, okay? And it looks level. And then later, what I normally do is I just use a little spirit level once, once it's firmed up. So then with my knife now, what I wanna do is just hold my cake here. And I'm just gonna hold my knife there and just turn it round naturally. So use your turntable to get it nice and flat. When we take the knife off, you wanna slowly take it off because if you take it off like this, can you see what will happen? It'd be disastrous. It won't be really. So make sure when you take your knife off, you slide it off beautifully. Okay, now who's ganache before? Can I have some thumbs up? Who's ganache that's watching? Come on, get, get those thumbs happening. Okay, so there's a few newbies there. So basically, what I wanna do is get my top nice and level. I've got a little bit of an indent there, so I'm just gonna smooth that out. And then that'll be good. Okay, now next, I'm gonna fill the sides. Now, if you want to, hello, people. So what I wanna do next, I'm gonna use my larger knife, okay? And what I want to do is I want to push from the middle and I want to go up and I want to go down to the bottom. So I want to push up and then down to the bottom. And it really does look, wow, that's a lot of ganache, you know. But it does look a lot. But then all of a sudden, I will use my scraper in a minute and I will take it off. Now what many people do is when they put ganache on, they either put loads down at the bottom and then the top becomes naked, okay? So what I want you to do is use your knife, and I tend to tell my students to put it in the middle, and then push it up, and then push it down, okay? And you're gonna fill up any of those gaps. So ganache is a beautiful product, and you can pipe it, you can use it and pour it for a drip cake, you can do all sorts with it, you know? But the key, thing that I teach in all my classes you've really got to use beautiful tasty chocolate okay so we want chocolate that just tastes delicious so I do truly recommend the Calibo chocolate and I've converted quite a few people now here in Brizzy um, if you're in Brisbane I get my chocolate from a company called Jamel's who are in Acacia Ridge you can buy smaller quantities from some of the uh, cakes shops. The other brand that I recommend is the Lint or the Plastos. Now this ganache here is, is resisting me a little bit. So this is my George Clooney joke. He's kind of resisting me. So what I want to do, I want to just warm that for a few seconds. And 
And then when we do that in our microwave, we need to be aware of smelly things in the microwave. So if you've heated up a curry or a spag bolognese, be aware because that can really, really smell and that will taint your ganache. Your ganache will taste of it, you know? So what I wanna do now, I wanna put some of that runny ganache that I warmed up back in my pot. So notice another thing that I do, I don't hold my cup, tubs of ganache when I'm ganaching. Everything sits on my tray. And look at my bench, beautiful. So I hope if, if, you, if you're not learning anything because you already know how to do this, I hope my little tray trick is a, a great tip, okay? Now if you look at this cake, you might go, my goodness, it looks like the kids have had a go on this one, okay? Can you see it looks quite messy? Now when you use your ganache, what I want people to do is just scrape that down because you'll notice as it starts to cool down, it will start to set. And you wanna basically scrape all that ganache down. And then with your knife, you also wanna scrape that clean because the ganache will start to set on there, okay? Now, years ago when I first started uh, cake decorating, probably at, Probably about 15, I had the opportunity to go and do some stuff with the chef through my school and he taught me, he used a, a, um, a set square to, to scrape the sides of the gattos. And I, I actually think that's still a great thing. Obviously you need to make sure you wash it and just use it purely just for your cakes. Some people use the big metal set squares that my husband uses to draw uh, cut wood. I don't know if they're food safe, but anyway. Um, but I'm going to use my lovely Royal Icing Scraper, okay? So we call this a side scraper. And again, I'm going to pop my thumb on one side and those four fingers, and I'm going to really balance that well. Some people hold it like this, and then it wobbles. You want to hold it really firm, like a handshake. And then what I want to do is I want to park my scraper up against the bottom of that board that it's sitting on. And I want to hold this almost like a doorway, okay? And then I'm going to bring it back slightly about a 45 degrees, and I'm gonna hold it really upright. I'm gonna turn my hand, but you probably won't see what I'm up to. But as I scrape, as I come all the way around, I scrape that ganache off, okay? And I'm just gonna go back around again. Now at the minute, it looks like holy gria cheese, okay? You can tell I'm from Europe, one of my favorite cheeses. So what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna go back in and fill all those gaps, okay? Now you don't need loads and loads of ganache on your, on your knife, just a small amount, okay? Because if you put loads on, then you're gonna have to take it all back off. So go back in and fill all those gaps. Now if you haven't liked my Facebook page, please like it and you'll be in the loop. My website at the minute is going mad and every single page is showing on the opening landing page. So I can't do anything. It's an error with the server and they're trying to sort it out. Apparently everyone that's on there has got problems with their website. Um, but I have a subscribe button. If you subscribe, you'll then go into my MailChimp and then I'll, you'll be on my, my um, newsletter. And I let people know what shows are happening in, in Brisbane and in Australia and also what books are getting released, what's in the new. And I'm going to try and really get it. Uh, I'm actually going to try and create a new website with new products that are out there and show you what I think and how they work and what I love about them or maybe what I don't love about them. So again, I'm going to get my scraper. So remember, we want to hold up that thumb. We want to hold those four fingers, okay? And then what I'm going to do with my turn, hand on my turntable, I'm going to hold my cake about 10 o'clock, hold my scraper about two o'clock, and I'm going to come all the way around again. And so can you see my sides are just starting to neaten up now, okay? So I'm just going to go back in, pop a little bit more, so if you've got any questions, please ask away and then I will answer them and I'll do a reply, okay? 
And the question is, no, you can't have a slice. Okay? It's for a client's cake. Again, so with my scraper, I'm going to hold my scraper there and I'm going to scrape all the way around. Now when we scrape, it's important that we hold that scraper beautiful and straight and not push it in on an angle. So I'm just going to go all the way around again. Now if you belong to any Facebook groups, I am very happy for you to share this once I put it up live. Because when I start sharing, Facebook thinks I'm spam and then they block me for like four days. It's like being a naughty girl at school when you've got no playtime for a week. Not that I'd know about that because I was a really good child. Don't talk to my brothers. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go all the way around. So can you see my sides are beautiful? Almost. And I've still got all this ganache. So even though it looks like a lot of ganache on the cake, I'm actually taking it all off, okay? Now I still got a few, and I've got a little chocolate dot there because the chocolate that I use is Calibo Collects. It's just tiny little bits. So I'm just gonna go back in there. And remember, don't put loads and loads on your knife. You don't need to. You can just put a smidgen, just a small amount and fill up any little gaps. Now I have a really lovely student and he's probably going to, he might watch this. His name's Warwick. And I tell you what, he, he's a builder. He's a maintenance guy. He's a big builder type guy. And yet when he comes into my classes, he's the most gentlest person with his cakes. And he makes awesome cakes. And apparently when it's a school thing, all the mums apparently hold their head in shame because he, he makes really great cakes, you know. So now, can you see the sides of my cake is looking beautiful? So what I want to do next, before I think, yeah, that looks beautiful, can you see I've got a nice moat of ganache on top? What I'm going to do, I'm going to let this set, I'm going to pop it in my fridge, or I can leave it out in front of the aircon, and I'm going to use a knife in a minute, and I'm going to chop off that perimeter. And then I'll have a beautiful, flat ganache cake. But before I get too excited, and the excitement is here, I need to make sure my sides are beautiful and straight. So what can happen sometimes when we ganache, we can ganache and our ganache can be like a vase, it can be tapered at the bottom, or I call it a sand castle where it sort of tapers, it tapers in at the bottom for the vase, but the sand castle sort of tapers out. So what we need to do, we need to make sure our scraper is clean, and I'm just gonna wipe my hands. So the other thing is, when I'm working, when I'm working up on my bench, I always have a clean dishcloth and I just give my hands a wipe, okay? And then, with my beautiful pot pink tea towel, see there's the chefiness you can't, I normally have an, a tea towel tucked in but I forgot. So with my scraper now, what I want to do is I want to place it up at the gates the sides of the cake and I want to make sure my sides are beautiful and straight, okay? And what I don't want to do is have a gap. I want them perfectly straight, as if it's a door and it fits perfectly, okay? So I'm going to go all the way around. And here at the front, it's slightly leaning out. So I'm going to come back in and scrape a little bit of ganache away and then put my scraper back up against it, okay? So that my sides are beautiful and straight. So if you have any questions, please question away. And then what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna actually pop this in the fridge and I will answer some of your questions for the next few minutes, whether it's five minutes and there's lots of people asking questions. Um, and if this is something that you're finding is of interest, I am happy to do this on a Wednesday, but not on a Thursday, Thursday's my crazy days. I'm very happy to show you what I'm up to. So on this, when I put my scraper here, my top bit is slightly leaning out and I want it perfectly straight. And you might think, well, why does she want it so neat? Okay, several things. Um, basically, my foundations are gonna be the same for when I put my fondant on. So, so basically, 
I'm gonna have to put a marker on so I know how high, how tall I am. So basically, when we ganache, if we ganache and the sides are going in or the sides are going out, then the fondant can only sit on that, okay? So if we're starting to stack cakes, and it's very noticeable when we start stacking cakes, because what will happen is when we stack them and we put internal structure, when we put the ribbon around the bottom, they won't fit properly because the sides are either tapering in or they're tapering out. So basically, we want the sides to be perfectly straight as they are, unless it's a Mad Hatter's cake and then we do angle it intentionally. But we want the sides of our cakes to be perfectly straight so that when we put the fondant on, the fondant will follow the shape that the ganache has made, okay? So basically, the sides need to be straight. We call it perpendicular, uh, apparently, that's the, the term. But what it means is to be straight sides because otherwise, when we start stacking the cakes higher and higher, and when my website is working properly, you'll be able to click on to my wedding cake gallery and you'll see some really tall cakes. All those sides have to be straight, otherwise they start to come out and look out and it looks so noticeable, okay? So what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna leave this cake, to, I'm gonna pop it in the fridge and I'm gonna leave it for about 10 minutes to set, set excuse me. Uh, I drank my coffee, my four o'clock coffee really quick. Um, I'm gonna pop this in the fridge and then I'm gonna come back and let you ask some questions. So if you've got any questions, have a quick thing. Okay, so so how long will you put it in the fridge for? Um, until it's set, basically. Um, I'm looking a bit flush. <laughs> Uh, it needs to be firm to touch, so it could, you know, if you're working, if you're in England now and it's November, it's probably a bit chilly, you know, so you'll probably find that your house is kind of cold and it will set quickly, but realistically, it will set in the fridge within 10 minutes, you know, but when we, when we make chocolate ganache, um, sometimes we make a mistake by Googling, and Googling is fine, don't get me wrong, but Google, if you, recipe, if you Google the recipe for ganache, it normally comes out equal chocolate to cream. But that's for a beautiful ganache sauce that we pour on like a drip cake or for dessert or, you know, plating up in the pastry um, section in the hotel. For ganache to set, we need to normally do two parts chocolate to cream. Now here in Queensland, or sunny Brisbane as I always make my comments, it needs to be three parts chocolate. So if I do a, six, a 300 carton of cream, I need 900 um, of chocolate to, to make that ganache set because otherwise it'll be soft just like buttercream is you know so realistically you need to pop it in the fridge and you need to choose a time when your fridge is not overflowing um, and it's not like shopping night where you've gone shopping and then your fridge is full up you, you know I'm lucky because I have a separate fridge in my studio so I don't have that concerns but realistically you don't want to be putting your cake into the fridge when it's packed because then it will take longer to set the other thing you need to be aware of is smelly things in the fridge, like cheese, garlic, salami. You know, all those things can taint the flavour of that ganache, okay? Right, I've got a few questions. I can't roll down. So how long have you put in the fridge? She loves that. Thank you, uh, Libby. Libby, that's a beautiful name. Whereabouts are you from? Have you got any questions coming up? No? Nope. So... I will run these sessions uh, for a few weeks um, up until Christmas so I'll show you what what's happening on my table um, I st still think we've got the same question anyone got any questions type a question in and it will come up no nope. no nope. uh, hi hi Shannon how are you if you have any questions, please type them in and I can answer them now, or if not, I will answer them later. So, um, normally I have my aircon running, and but my aircon, it's not really hot today. It's about 24, 25. Now in England, that's hot. We'd be on the beach putting our suntan lotion on. But here, it's, it's not really hot, but we've had humidity. Um, how long can I store the remaining ganache? That's interesting. Okay, so when I make my batches of ganache, um, when I make my batch, uh, I pour them into small containers, okay? And basically, when I make my batch, 300 mils of uh, cream to 900 chocolate, I generally make two and a half containers of ganache. 
I got more questions. Ratio for white chocolate. Okay, so so the, the ratio for normal chocolate, and I normally do two parts milk chocolate, one part dark. We normally do three parts chocolate to cream. So if I do a 300 ml carton of cream, I need 900 grams of chocolate. If it's white ganache you're gonna make, you can increase it up to four times, even up to five times, okay? And the easiest method I find is to bring your cream to the boil in the, in a, in a microwave rather than the pan, and then make sure your chocolate is not chilled. So with your white chocolate, break it up. If it's in the bar, I buy Colette, so they're tiny little pieces, and then pour your hot cream on top, okay? Now you'll find that you, you can even, when you make your ganache, and you actually may, may find, wow, that's really stiff, okay? You can pop it back in your microwave on defrost mode for about a minute and then just stir it and then a minute and then stir it. But you can actually put ganache in your containers once you've made your batch. You could actually put that straight in the freezer and then you can take it straight out the freezer and scoop it because there's no cocoa solids in it. It doesn't actually even freeze, okay? It does get cold, but it just doesn't set. So white chocolate ganache is a different ball game to ordinary ganache. And sometimes I have brides that ring up and say, oh, I only want white chocolate ganache on the cake. And I go, why? And they go, we, we don't want the shadow coming through the fondant. I said, you don't get that. But the problem is with white chocolate ganache, it's just like buttercream. It will not set firm. It's kind of spongy, you know? I've got more questions coming up. Okay, do, do I have to bring the cake covered in ganache to room temperature before I cover it with fondant? Yes, you do. So once my cake is set, I purely have only put it in there so that I can cut the ridge off, okay? I'm going to show you with a paring knife how I cut that, and then it's done. And then, um, but yes, uh, that's why I only leave it in there for 10 minutes. I don't leave it in overnight because otherwise the coldness will creep into the cake and into the sponge. And then when we take it out and we brush it with water or syrup or whatever your method is, when you roll out your fondant and put it on top, what will happen is all those cold crystals that are hiding inside that cake because they've developed, because they've been chilled, will try and escape. And then what will happen is you'll have bubbly, soft fondant and you'll have lots of little air bubbles, you'll have little pockets, you know, and it can even bubble up so much that if you leave it overnight, when you come back the next day, they even look like little blisters, you know, and then you're stuck with fondant that's got a blister toad-like cover, you know, so that's not a good look. So what you need to do is once the cake has firmed up and you trim it like I'm going to show you in a minute, then I leave that to room temperature. Now room temperature realistically should be, your fondant temperature for your cake should be that you're cool enough that you're not hot and clammy, okay? Now I'm a little bit hot and clammy because A, I'm in front of a camera and I kind of don't act great in front of a camera but my, my challenge this year is just to overcome that. Um, and it doesn't involve alcohol either. But um, I've turned the air con off. Now realistically, this studio, when people come in and go, wow, it's lovely and cool. Realistically, when we cake decorate, we should be in an environment that is really nice and cool. Not cold, not freezing, but cool. And what that means is you're not hot and clammy. Because if you are hot, sticky and clammy, your fondant and your ganache will all be the same, okay? So that's why it's really hard for some people when they do their cake decorating, because they've really got hot kitchens, you know? And I suggest to my students, be nice to your mum or your sister and go somewhere and do your cakes there where it's cooler, you know? Um, and that's a problem often, especially some of the houses here in Australia, we don't have aircon in the kitchen, but nowadays the modern houses kind of all have open plan and we have ducted air or, you know. I'm gonna just check, is there any more questions coming up? Um, do you need to bring the cake that's covered in ganache room temperature before? You've already asked that one. I've already answered that one. So yeah, you mustn't cover your cake whilst it's cold out in the fridge because you will get all that, those cold crystals that are in that cake come out. So realistically, it should only take about 10 minutes to chill. But that's bearing in mind, if your fridge is not full, if your fridge is full, then it's gonna take longer to, to get down in temperature. Have we got any more questions? So last week I had a really busy week um, and the week before was even busier. I don't know if anybody saw Harold the giraffe. Um, let me show you. Not, I haven't actually got a giraffe in the studio. Um, so if you're under 35 and you're here in Australia, you will know 
uh, Harold the Giraffe. So Harold the Giraffe is an awesome character that goes into all the schools from the age, I think the kids are about six upwards. And he goes in, they've got a big massive, uh, they've got a resource unit down on the Gold Coast and they've got quite a few uh, vans. I say quite a few, not that many that you can't make a donation, but basically Harold, oh, we've got more questions coming up. Can I do the ganache today and cover it with fondant tomorrow? Yes, you can, yeah. So that's what I normally do. I normally, I normally, I don't always cover the cake on the same day, but yeah, you can. The other thing I suggest is writing a timeline when you make stuff, you know? And then, um, cause, because when I meet people after, I, I teach a few and then I bump into them shopping and I go, hi, I go, hi. I can't remember them. I go, what class did you go to? And they went, oh, I didn't know his art. Went, you did, three years ago. And I can remember then once they tell me what they've done. But most of them, when I said to them, are you doing cakes then? Oh, no. And I go, why? And they'll say, well, there was so much preparation. And I was right up against the wall when I was trying to do it. And uh, so, you know, many people come because they want to make cakes for their kids and they want to learn the skills that I have and then, you know, get creative, you know. And basically, um, they go, no, because, you know, I was right up against the time and, you know, I was spend all night doing the cakes. So my biggest tip to everyone, and I've written a few articles about it, is writing a timeline. Writing a timeline of when you start, when you finish, when you start, when you finish, each section, okay? And then at the end, when you make your lovely cake, take a nice photo and then print it on an A4 bit of paper and put it in a sleeve and then write a little report, okay? Pretend you're at school, uh, but you're a teacher and you're writing a report about that cake, what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it, and what was the timeline. And often, people give up because they don't allow themselves enough time. Because what people don't realize is it takes a while to put the cakes together. They're not done in 10 minutes, five minutes, you know. They are, you know, 40, 40, 40 minute sessions, depending on what we're doing, you know. So for me, I, I ganache all my cakes in one go. Okay, so today is the day that I'm ganaching all the cakes. So I've got four cakes going out Friday, okay, which is unusual, but that's what it is, you know. It pays it pays for my travels, it pays me to get my second book out. So um so today I'm ganaching all the cakes, they were all baked last night, and then today I'm ganaching them all, and then tomorrow I'm decorating them and they're all going out early Friday morning. So so what I normally do is I ganache all my cakes on the one day and then the next day then I cover with fondant. Now when you're working full time or you've got little ones it's really hard to juggle all that and I know because I've been there and done that. But the thing is you need to really allocate yourself great working time, you know. So if you feel like you get the kids to bed and they're having their baths at seven then realistically it's no good doing that housework at eight o'clock, get in, do your cakes and then do your housework afterwards, you know, because sometimes we just need that, you know, energy to make that cake. And that's why many people give up because they go, oh, it was so time consuming. But if you write a timeline and you work out what you liked, what you didn't like, and then you look at your timeline and go, wow, I really could have done that in advance. And often the decorations we can make weeks in advance, they can be made up, put in a tub and then put in a, a, a cupboard somewhere, you know. Because um, my mum always told me that Rome was not built in a day and she said, it's the same with your cakes, you know, it's not in the same, you can't do it all in one day. So yeah, I always ganache all my cakes today and then tomorrow I will cover them in fondant, okay? And then generally I do that in the morning and then I start moving them around or decorating them. The cake that I just ganache just now that's on that big board, I'm not going to move it. It's already positioned in on that finished board and then I'm... Um, I, I might do a live video tomorrow, but I might just do a video and then put it up on Facebook as well. So, if that answers your questions. Any more questions we've got happening? So just, I leave it in the, on the counter to decorate it. Yeah, so I, um, I would just put it in a cardboard box and make sure no one, no little fingers touch it or any bugs or anything. You know, just put it in a, uh, a cake box if you've got one or a food umbrella on top. Yeah, but you need to make sure you're your workplace is not hot and sticky, okay? Now, let me talk to you about Harold. Uh, if you're under 35 and live here in Australia, Harold is a notoriously well-loved person that visits all the schools. And basically, any kid over seven years old will know about Harold. I, don't, I know nothing about Harold, but one of Harold's uh, fundraiser guys rang me up a couple of weeks ago and said, could I donate something? to the charity and I went yep yeah, you can have my book 
So he rang me up and came over to collect it. And uh, he was he was kind of, oh, this is a nice room. I went, yeah, lovely. And um, he said, we've got Harold's 30th anniversary. I went, lovely. And I said, so would you like a nice Harold the Giraffe cake? And they said, he said, could you? I went, yeah, I can, you know. So anyway, he bought me Harold anyway, so Harold's mine. But um, basically, I made a beautiful, big Harold. And Harold was five cakes. He had to feed 100 plus people. And I actually made his head all out of cake. No styrofoam. I'm really anti-styrofoam. Some of my big cakes on my website are entire covered cakes with, with fondant. And they're styrofoam, but I hate mixing cakes and styrofoam. I just don't do it. It's just, it's just not on, you know. Um, you don't mix styro with cakes. So um, what I did was I made his big, massive head, and I did it on a board, and I did crispy treats for his jaw and that his back, back of his head, and then the rest was all cake, and I carved it. So it's actually on my Facebook page, and there's an awful thing of me cutting him all up. But the kids couldn't believe how awesome he was. And it was funny, we put a sign, do not touch. Um, so we took it down the Gold Coast. And my good friend Marcel, if she ever watches this, thank you Marcel, because you were a dream in helping me with all of that. Uh, and plus it was nice to have coffee at the end. But um, the, the, I, we put a sign up saying do not touch, but all the adults were coming along touching it, you know? And they couldn't believe it was cake. So for me, that is where I get my joy even more so. You know, I have a joy when I walk in my studio, but I have a huge joy when I actually see my cake. Uh, amazed that it is cake, and then also getting scoffed. Okay, we've got any more questions? I don't know if we have. Uh, so just store it in the F, R-E-F, or can I leave it out? Yep, if I have to decorate it tomorrow. Yeah, I think I've answered that. Okay, so any more questions? Nope. If you watch this later and it's not a live feed, you'll notice there won't be a live sign up in the corner. So if you have any questions, just type away and I will turn my notifications back on and then I will come back in and reply, okay? Um, I'm gonna go and get the cake out, but I'm just gonna give my hands a good wash. So I'm just gonna be a couple of ticks off, off the um, Facebook Live. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to move Harold. Let me drop the camera a little bit more. I'm going to get a little jug of hot water and a little paring knife. Now, paring knife is just a posh word for us chefs to sound fancy, but it's a veggie knife. And all I'm going to do is just drop that in my jug of hot water. Now this has to be hot. It cannot be tepid. It has to be hot water. So you can either pop the kettle on and fill up a, a, a mug of hot water but it has to be hot. You can tell I'm from London with my common accent saying water. Now, the next thing I also do is I just get a small ramekin or a little dish because I'm going to pop all my off cuts of chocolate in that and I don't want to put them back into the fridge. We've got the same question here. Okay. So, what I don't want to do is put all my off cuts back in my ganache because I'm going to get a little bit of water on the ganache. So, I don't want to mix water and ganache together. Earlier, I think someone spoke about ganache. Um, when I do make ganache, I only reheat it once, uh, heat it up and then I use it and then I heat it up once more and with the ganache it will last three weeks in the fridge um, and it has to have a sealed lid you can also pop it in the freezer and freeze it as well but make sure the container you use is free is a, a freezer type container uh, 
just store it. I'm still reading the same question. Okay. Right, now, with my knife, I'm going to tap it in the water and I'm just going to lift it up. I'm going to bring this camera in just a little bit closer so you can see what I'm up to. I think you can see that better. Hi, love your video. Thank you, Belinda. Uh, I'll be sending you a, a slice of chocolate out later. <laughs> so, I'm just going to warm up my knife in the jug. Now I'm out of shot. No, I'm not. And then what I want to do is with the top of the knife, I'm going to find the top of my the top of my cake, and I'm just going to hold my knife really, really flat. And as I go along, I'm just going to slide it all the way round. At that point, yum, yum, yum. Okay, and then what I want to do is realistically, I don't want to just get the edge of the knife around the top because I'll go up and down like a hill. I won't, but generally you will. So basically what I want to do is concentrate and keep the top of that knife flat on top of that cake. And as I do that, can you see it just lifts all that excess beautiful chocolate? Now you may go, you may ask, <gasps> What does she do with all that delicious chocolate? Okay, well, I'm a bit naughty. I have mocha coffees <laughs> and I put a bit of chocolate in my mocha coffee, but don't tell my husband, okay? So, once I've sliced it all off, can you see? I've sliced all the top of my cake. What I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna get one of my scrapers. And then with my scraper, I'm simply just gonna go on top of the cake and just scrape that ganache. Can you see? Now, this has still got a bit of water in, so I don't want to put it in the ganache that I'm going to reuse, okay? So, and then what I'm going to do, last but not least, I'm just going to push my scraper all the way up. So any bumpy bits that might have just come back down. And then using my scrapers, I'm just going to lightly bring that in. I always tell my students, Okay, there's a bad joke coming up. But do it like first date, nice and gentle. Not 30 years of marriage, you know, and really nice and gentle when you scrape it, okay? Now, if your board is a bit messy, which it may do, I have shares in kitchen paper towel. So what you need to do is just fold up your paper towel not scrunch it, and then you're going to just tidy up your cake board, okay? Now, last but not least, I've got a couple of little tiny little dots here, can you see? So I'm just going to get a tiny, tiny little bit of soft ganache, and just go back in and fill those up, okay? And just get your knife nice and flat and fill those up. So that is how I ganache all of my cakes. Now, if you wanted to, you can, if you want to, um, and we're not straight, hang on, let's straighten that up. If you wanted to, you can do a... Um, What's the word? Marbled effect. So um, one of my cakes is a marbled cake that's going out for a wedding cake. And uh, a couple of years ago, I so what I do is I make my white chocolate cake and my white mud cake, and then I mix, um, I drizzle, I actually fill up these jugs with my mixture, and then I pour it in the tin, and I do a layer of white, layer of dark, layer of white, and then I just swirl it with a big uh, long spoon that I have. Um, but what I also did um, was I did marbled effect ganache. So what I did was I had a tub of white ganache and a tub of chocolate ganache. And I did five parts white chocolate to cream. And then I didn't mix the ganache together in a pot. I had one pot of white ganache, one pot of dark ganache. And then I put dollops everywhere and then I smeared it over. And then I actually made marbled effect fondant. So the cake was marbled, but it was black and white. The ganache was marbled. And even though they got a small seam of it you could still see it was marbly and then the fondant was marbly so that was lovely you know sometimes i'm a bit naughty if i 
when I sit down for a consultation because I kind of just want to jazz the cakes up. I hide things inside the cakes. So um, there was one cake, uh, it's on the website, it's a big treasure box, uh, a pirate ship treasure box type thing. Not a pirate ship, but a pirate treasure box. And he was called Captain Scarbelly, that's his nickname, and it was his 40th. And then what I did was I hid M&Ms in the middle because I made loads of little coins and they're all fond and edible. And I said, to, the girl said to me, can you put something in the middle? I went, yeah, we can put m and She said, oh, that'd be great. So when he cut into the cake, all these M&Ms came out. And um, that was awesome, you know. So um, my tips, right, as a cake maker is you've got to enjoy what you do. And I think the biggest part of that enjoyment has to be part of the planning, you know. And I think we really need to plan what we do because otherwise we're like, up against the clock going oh it's midnight and then you know next day you go back to work or you've got your kids or whatever you're doing um, and I think when you write a timeline you get aware of how many minutes certain things take because in our heads we think oh that's only gonna take 10 minutes 40 minutes later so when I write my timelines I write a timeline in every single cake that I make okay and I just and then at the end after the cake's gone after a day or so, I then go, what did I like about that cake? What didn't I like? What was painful? What was wonderful? But I write a great review about that, that cake. And then what it does, as a cake maker, professional cake maker, and the word professional means is that I charge. I'm licensed. I, I do it for a business. doesn't mean my skills are better than anyone else's. But um, the point is I can then price my cake properly. So if I priced a cake that you know it took six hours to do, and I priced it at 300 bucks, I seriously have not made any money on that cake. So next time that cake would be, you know, another three to four hours of my time, which is 40 bucks an hour I charge out. Um, let me put my glasses on. Can I make the same with buttercream? Yeah, you can. But if you listen to the video at the beginning again, I don't recommend buttercream because the problem, unless you've got a cold country, if you're in a cold climate, fine. But here in Australia, you know, moving a cake from a house to a car to a venue is, is, is a bit of a, you know, for me, I, I've got it all worked out. I have my car running a few minutes, my car's all darkened and I have great boxes that are nice and cool. But the problem is with buttercream here in Brisbane, in Queensland, in Australia, it's just too warm, you know. The only time you can really use buttercream is if you're working in a really nice, cool house and you're not moving that cake anywhere, you know, so there's no difference in temperature. So I hope you've enjoyed this session. I've gone over an hour. I've gone on an hour and five minutes. My husband says I can talk under concrete. I hope he doesn't make me prove that theory. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I know I talk quick, but that's the London bit in me. Um, Please like my Facebook page. If you've got any Facebook groups you belong to, please share it. You enjoyed it very much. Thank you, Shansan. Shansan, what country are you from? Are you from sunny? Are you very much welcome? Um, and then you'll be able to replay this back, okay? So what I wanna do is, okay, is I'm gonna do this preferably every Wednesday. Um, I really want to shoot a royal icing class because there's a few little tips that you might go aha and then you'll, you'll find that you'll, you'll pipe really well. Now many people have told me you know Facebook is for promoting your business, for selling your cakes etc and people that visit my Facebook page do order cakes but also some of you follow me see what I get up to, some of you are interested in cake decorating and um, and so I kind of think, well, if I, do, if I put these videos up, if I have a client that wants to go on my website, they don't need to watch my videos, you know, they can go to my gallery. But I think it's good that we can all connect nowadays. And I think it's really good that we can, you know, connect. And you may not watch this live because you're probably sleeping if you're in England at the minute. But wherever you may be, you can catch up with it, you know. I do have a YouTube channel as well. So you can go onto YouTube. Um, my website at the moment, as, as I said before, is playing silly tricks and at the minute there's errors on the server. So um, even my landing page has got 500 tags. It's not looking normal. Um, but if you follow me on Facebook, then when I do a live feed, you'll get a notification, 
even if it's during your sleep time or whatever, you'll get a notification the next day. Um, I have got my YouTube channel, and there's a couple of videos I've had like crazy amounts, and other people haven't watched other videos. It's like, what? But um, wherever you may be, my tips are enjoy what you do, you know? And I think my enjoyment really is when I see the client with their cake and I see the photos and it's like, oh, that's, that's my magic. Um, we've got another question from Shansan. With very hot climate, recommendations here for ganache. Yeah, 5.1. Yeah, absolutely. And the hotter it is, you'll find that the higher the amount of chocolate to cream, you know? Um, the problem with white chocolate is white chocolate really isn't chocolate. It's a, com it's, a, it's a byproduct of chocolate. Really, it shouldn't be called chocolate because in order for it to be a chocolate, it has to be, I think, above, is it 28% cocoa or 29? I should know this. My pastry chef's probably going to be going, that girl, I, she, she learned nothing from me. But realistically, um, white chocolate is really the worst chocolate to be using, although it tastes delicious, you know, but for coating and being firm for when we cover, it, it will soften up because of the friction. But if you're in a hot country, e even five parts chocolate to, to cream, yeah. So it depends on where you are. The best way to do is just to make half a batch, you know. The smallest cream that we have here in Australia is a 300 ml carton of cream. I own, also, I don't use thick and cream. Now, different people in different areas of Australia say thick and cream, no problem, you know? But here in Australia, where I am in Brisbane, if I use thick and cream, my cream just stays soft and squidgy because it's got gelatin in and it actually stops it, the, 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 the cocos from, from setting, okay? So the only two creams I use is the, the Farmer's Pure Cream or the Paul's Pure Cream, okay? Um, but different people, I've got one student that's now down in Tassie, and then I'm sending a few books there, you know, and she says that, um, you know, I only do two parts chocolate to cream, because in Tassie, down south, it's really quite cold, you know. But I have people further up in um, Townsville. I love our names in Australia. Um, Townsville, you know, that sounds, Ville is French, but... Um, Anyway, Townsville, she's using seven parts chocolate to cream because it's so soft, you know? And then um, Adelaide, you know, everyone has different temperatures. And Singapore, different temperatures. So what you really need to do is test your ganache, you know, test it. And um, some, some of the fondants that they're making now can be refrigerated, but some of them taste awful, you know? And the thing is, for me, it's got to be a beautiful cake inside, it's got to be beautiful ganache, and it's got to be beautiful fondant, okay? And I don't want fondant that I have to peel off when I first moved here, I met one cake maker and she said, oh, I just tell everyone to peel it off. I don't want to tell my clients to peel it off. I want them to scoff it and enjoy it. And I roll it really thin, you know. So the thing is, wherever you may be, everyone is different. But if you Google ganache, Mr. Google comes up equal cream to chocolate. That is not. That's for a sauce ganache. You know, that's for a coating or for a dipping. But for us to use it for, for fondant or to pipe, we need minimum three parts. Right. I must go. Um, yep, yeah, 5.1. Well, thank you very much for watching, and I will pop this up and publish it now. And if you want to save it to any of your groups, you're very much... Can I save the cake covered with ganache in the freezer? I, I actually think you can, okay. But I actually think it's better to put your cake in the freezer and then your ganache in the freezer separately and then do it all together and bring it all out. You can, you, you, you can ganache your cake on, on a board and then like this board I've, this board I've glued in position because I'm going to cover it with fondant, it's all going to be done, I'm not going to move it around. But if you ganache your cake, you could, but what I would recommend is you get it into a storage box, okay? Um, first of all, wrap some uh, baking paper around it, make sure it's set and then glad wrap it and then put it in a protection, protective freezer box. Uh, let me show you. You must have known, I must have known you were going to ask this. So these are the big decor boxes and you can buy them in all the cookware shops. You can buy bigger ones, square ones and then deeper ones. And these are perfect if you want to put them in your freezer. But you must protect the cake. Otherwise, you know, if you chuck a bag of oven chips or peas or something in your freezer, you'll dent the cakes, even though they're, they're frozen. 
What I generally do is I glad wrap it first. I, I very, very rarely freeze cakes. The only real way I freeze cakes is when I go overseas and then I come back. A couple of years ago I went to USA and when I came back, I flew back on the Sunday. I didn't get here till the Tuesday because we were in advance. I had a nine tier cake on the Saturday. And you may go, no way, but I got it together. A, I was jet lagged, but I made all the flowers. And then the two cakes, the two bottom cakes were styrofoam. So I had them covered and in the box weeks before, okay? But what I did was I got my hubby, I baked all the cakes, I left them all in the tins, I glad wrapped them, and then I froze them. And then I got my hubby on the Sunday to take them all out of the freezer, put them on a cooling rack, and then let them defrost. I then got him to get all my ganache tubs out of the freezer. He got them out on the Monday, and then I defrosted them in the fridge. And then come Tuesday, when I flew in, I ganached all the cakes Tuesday night. I couldn't see a thing, but they, I just did it on pilot. And then the next day, I then covered. Then the next day, I stacked. And then, um, sorry, I covered on the, I ganached on the Wednesday. I covered on the Thursday. Then I stacked it. There's a video of me doing some pole dancing, putting it together on, on one of the YouTube things. I wasn't really pole dancing, but the cakes were. But you can use these storage containers. They come deeper and they come bigger. But my point is, if you do ganache your cake on a board and then you want to freeze it because you're short of time, what I suggest you do is wrap it up in bacon, a bake, baking, not bake, bacon, glad wrap it and then put it in the freezer and let it freeze. And then once it's frozen, take it out and then put it in a container. The containers slow it down from the freezing. If you put it in a container, it can take up to four days to freeze. When you want to defrost it, ideally you should defrost it in the fridge overnight, okay? And you want to make sure that it's really not cold because again, if there's coldness, that will come through the fondant. Right, I must go. I have, I'm Superwoman tonight. We have a sweet and sour pork and it's not even in the oven. Don't tell my husband, okay? Any questions that you have, please leave them on, on here and I will uh, put this up live now and you can ask some questions. And I look forward to perhaps seeing you next Wednesday um, here in my studio. So have a great week and um, look after yourselves. And today in Australia, we had awesome news. They're allowing, yay, same-sex marriages. Why not? So I'm really pleased with that. Now we've got to get it through the Senate and all the rest of it. So, you know, uh, see you soon. You too. Yeah, it's amazing, Valinda. Is that what you're saying? You too. Oh, okay, take care. I get you. But the same sex thing, that's great because at the end of the day, it it's, it's, should, should be as it is anyway. Everyone should be able to get married and etc. Anyway, I'm not going to get political. Have a great week and uh, thank you for watching and uh, please like my Facebook page. Take care. Bye.